Good afternoon everybody. Welcome to my craft room on this extremely hot Friday afternoon. Very hot indeed in the UK at least. Um, and if you're joining me, well done. I hope you're somewhere shady uh, with the fan on and a cold drink to hand. I'm finding it difficult to even think today, to be honest. We're not used to this kind of heat in England in the summer. I'll give you some numbers in just a minute, um, which show you how far out of our comfort zone we are. And yeah, it's hard to concentrate. And I'm really hoping that my phone will not overheat. Um, it feels very hot even before I've started. And so I'm hoping that it's not going to overheat and cut out and cause me a problem. So welcome to Mary. It looks like Mary is here and I'm very pleased to have you, Mary. I hope you're not too hot at home. Um, I went out in the garden a little while ago just uh, out of curiosity to see what the thermometer was saying. And in the shade it was reading and I wrote it down because I couldn't believe it. 40 degrees centigrade and that's in the shade. Um, if you're overseas, I know quite a lot of you lovely people in the US watch this. That equates to 104 Fahrenheit. Now that's probably not very high for a lot of you. I know it gets phenomenally hot in all sorts of other places across the world. But a really nice English summer's day is normally about 25 centigrade um, and that's 77 Fahrenheit. So 25 is what we're used to if it's really nice and today is 40 and as I say that is in the shade in my garden. So it's incredibly hot. I've got all my windows open. I've got French doors in my craft room. Aren't I lucky? Um, they are open too and I've got the fan on but that probably means there's more background noise than I would like and maybe than you would like. If it's difficult to hear me, let me know. And if you can hear me, do again, let me know. That would be really, really helpful. I'm just going to hop over to my iPad and see if I can see what you can see and make sure that I'm as live as I look like I am. Okay, let me just find myself, turn the volume down because nobody wants to hear me twice. Okay, looks like I'm there. Uh, so Maureen saying the sound is okay, fantastic. Thank you so much Maureen, that is really helpful to know. Okay, brilliant. Right, so what have I got to tell you? A few bits of information. Um, if you would like to book the September Fancy Fold Cards class, that's an in-person class, then booking for that closes Friday next week, so you've got a week left to book for that class. Uh, everything's blowing on my desk. Um, so I would love to see you there. We will be making two different fancy fold cards. We make templates for them. You get written instructions with measurements as well, and then you'll also make a project. So that will be next week's, uh, sorry, next month's class. Next week, next, this week's class runs next, no, this, <laughs> let me start again. The August class runs on Monday, so I'm looking forward to that. But if you'd like to book the September class, you have until a week today. If you'd like more information on that, just drop me an email and I will let you know. I can see Mary's put an exciting comment up. Let me see if I can find it. She's just had a video call from her granddaughter who's had her baby early, Ned. Fantastic. Well, that's such exciting news, Mary. I'm delighted for you and for her. So that's absolutely wonderful. So that must make you a great grandma. Is that right? Have I got that right? Got the generations correct? And thank you for saying that you can see and hear me OK, which is good news. OK, so that's the class bookings out the way. Um, I've told you it's very, very hot here <laughs> and I'm really hoping that my phone will cope. Um, exciting news of, uh, or advanced news I should say, of an event that Stamping Up is holding. For the first time Stamping Up is holding a crafting event which is for both demonstrators and customers. Uh, normally we run events for demonstrators, Stamping Up does, and we demos run events for you our lovely customers. But this time, Stamping Up is running an event for everybody and it's on World Card Making Day, which is going to be on Saturday, October the 1st this year. Uh, it's a free event and it's one that you can join online from the comfort of your home or you can gather together some of your crafting friends as well. I am certainly going to be there. I will be sending out more information on it in my newsletter this week. And if you would like to attend, you are very welcome to. If you don't get my newsletter, but you would like to, then let me know and I can add you to the list. 
Um, what else was I going to say about that? Yes, uh, there is, as I say, it's a free event. It's running on Saturday, October the 1st, which I know is a very long way away, but put it in your diary now so you don't get booked up. There will be some techniques being demonstrated and then there will be three cards to make during the event. Now you can use whatever you've got in your craft stash to make the cards. You'll be able to substitute in stamps and card colours and so on. However, there are three suggested bundles of stamps and dies, which is what they are going to use. And so if you would like to order them before the event, so you've got what you need, order one bundle or even more if you've got a little bit of money to spend, maybe you've had a birthday, then you can do that. And of course, celebration is on until the end of this month. So if you get yourself organized, you could get something free to go along with that bundle as well. When you order the bundle, um, you will also get a set of um, iridescent pearls for free. So that's all good. I can send you more information on that if you would like, or you can go to my website and find it. In a minute when I turn the camera down, I'll make sure that my website address is there. And if you go to the Shop Now tab and then look at New, and then that drop down menu will give you World Card Making Day and absolutely all the information is there. There is somewhere for you to register for the event, but you don't have to do that. However, if you have registered for the event, they will keep you up to date with it. So uh, if you're happy to give your email address and have the information sent to you, then I would register for the event. So that's very exciting. I'll be talking more about that as we get nearer the time. The other thing to tell you is that you have two more weeks to order, no, one more week, <laughs> one more week to order the current sweet sampler, which is the Splendid Day sampler. When I turn the camera down, I will very quickly just show you that, just to remind you, but I've shown it in more detail in previous weeks, so I don't want to take too much time showing you that yet again, because a lot of you I know will have seen it before. I can send you information if you would like me to, just send me an email. My email address will be on the desk in a minute when I turn the camera down um, and just say that you would like more information on that and I can send it out to you. Today's subject is all about card layering. I get asked so many times, how do I decide on the different sizes of layers for my cards? So I thought I would give you a little bit of a theory. So I hope you've got a notebook and pen so you can jot some information down. And then I've got a couple of cards to make with you and I've got some cards to show you as well. So I'm hoping that by the time we get round to near three o'clock, you'll be a card layering expert. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, that was a wasp flew straight into my, <laughs> in my eye. Did you see that? <laughs> I gather we've got a lot of wasps this summer. I'm not sure why. It's probably something to do with the temperature. They probably really like it. Um, OK, I'm going to move some paperwork out of the way. Uh, let's pop that down there and then I'm going to turn the camera down and show you very briefly the sweet sampler and then we will get on with some crafting. Mary has just said that she's got seven great, goodness me Mary, that is a lot of grandchildren and great grandchildren. Well congratulations on another one. Okay so let me just turn everything orange just while I alter my settings and turn the camera down to my desk so that hopefully you will get a good view of what I'm wanting to show you. Oh, oops, I've just pulled things. I'm hoping I haven't affected my microphone. Tell me if the sound goes. Not that you'll have heard that, of course, if the sound goes. All right, let's just see where we are. I think I'm going to need to move, move things a little bit. Oh, we have to sort out my wires. Let's move this. This doesn't seem to be down quite as much as it usually is. Let's see if I can alter that. Okay, well, there doesn't seem to be quite such a lag as there normally is, so that's something. Let me move my grid paper slightly sideways. I've got it blue tacked all round to my desk just to try to um, avoid it moving. There we are. And actually, let me move that up a little bit. There we are. OK, I'm sorry for the wobbles. I'm just trying to give you as good a view as I can. 
Right, let's just let that settle, see how it is. That's a little bit twisted round, isn't it? Is that any better? I don't want to fiddle for too long because I often end up making it worse rather than better. But I think, there we go, I think that's better. Okay, so I need some washi tape on that lead. So you can see uh, my website address there if you would like more details on the uh, World Card Making Day event. If you go to my website and click on the Shop Now tab, which isn't the obvious tab to, to look at, um, I would expect you to go to the Events tab if that was logical. Um, however, I will put it on my Events tab as an event. I just haven't had a chance to do that yet. But for the moment, you can go to the Shop Now tab, then click on New, and in the drop-down menu, click on World Card Making Day. And if you would like me to send you information or pop you on my mailing list, send me an email here, handmade at home at hotmail.co.uk. And while I'm making the requests, it really helps me if you are able to like or love and share today's video on Facebook. Or if you're watching me on YouTube, if you like what I do, then do subscribe because that way uh, you uh, will be able to access all my videos very easily. And if you'd like to know when I've put a new one up there, then if you click that little bell, then you can get the notifications whenever I upload a new video and liking my video on YouTube and commenting really helps the algorithm show it to people. So if you feel like doing that, then I will be very grateful indeed. Right, let me move these out of the way. And I'm gonna quickly bring in the Splendid Day Sweet Sampler. So as always, this is a selection of items from a product suite I've broken down the big packets into smaller but you still usable amounts and you pay the catalogue price for those am amounts so obviously it's less than the full packs I just divide up the packs divide up the cost of the packs and then I round the total up to the nearest pound and that's what you pay so here we go copper foil five sheets of A4 in these beautiful ice cream colours a quarter of a pack of the patterned paper, a quarter of a reel of the seam binding ribbon and a half a pack of the open leaf trinkets. So if you can collect it from me that's £14. If you'd like me to post it to you I can send that out to you no problem and that will be 16 50 It will go out to you in a board backed envelope second class post. You just need to let me know by the 19th of August, which is a week today, that you would like this sampler and then I will order everything for you and I will post it out to you or have it ready for you to collect by the 23rd of September at the latest. I allow plenty of time because sometimes supplies get stuck in customs or what have you. So I don't want to promise that you'll have it in two weeks and then you haven't. Uh, but certainly you should get it by the 23rd of September. And if I can get things out earlier, then I do. All right, then. So card layering. So let me show you what I mean by layers, first of all. So here is a card. I've got my card base. And then I have two layers on here. I've got this... Um, brain's gone dead coastal cabana layer and then a white layer which I've stamped so this is what I mean by card layers some people call them mats um, which I think is more of an American term I think in this country we tend to call them layers but you can call them whatever you like but that's what I'm talking about so I'm going to set this aside for a minute but I will bring it back in shortly now I have a system for working out the sizes of my card layers and that is to bring each piece of card smaller and smaller in size by um, a regular amount. So this card, each layer on here is a quarter of an inch shorter and narrower, so both dimensions, a quarter of an inch narrower than the one before it. Now sometimes, instead of a quarter of an inch, I make it an eighth of an inch and that gives me a very narrow border. So if I show you this card, I'll lift it up actually because it is a very narrow border so I have a dark green it's evening evergreen card layer underneath my patterned paper and that border is 
a much narrower one than on the dragonfly card. So here I brought my pa paper layer was only an eighth of an inch shorter and narrower than the card layer, which gives me a much narrower border. And basically, that's what I do. Um, now I'm going to explain a bit more and I'm going to show you a, a handy dandy tool for making life I think a lot easier in a second. But just let me say that again. So for this kind of border, then each layer is a quarter of an inch shorter and a quarter of an inch narrower than the one before it. And for this kind of border, the layers are one eighth of an inch narrower and shorter than the ones before. And if I put them together, you can hopefully see the difference. So I said that was it in a nutshell. Now I have a tool which makes life a lot easier. So I have cut a whole lot of layers of card here. Now these are to fit a standard UK card which is cut from half a sheet of A4 card and to make sure that all the borders are even it's actually cut down slightly to this size five and three quarters of an inch by four inches and actually let me just add on there so the card you start off with is five and three quarters of an inch by eight inches and you score it at four so that is this size. So to make a card like this, that is in portrait orientation, you'd start off with five and three quarter inches wide by eight inches long, score it at four inches, and that gives you something of this size, which is five and three quarter inches by four inches. You'll get two of these out of one sheet of A4 card. Now, I'm aware that American letter size card is different measurements to ours. The principles I'm talking about in terms of the increments will work really well for you too, but you will be starting off with your card a different size. And I'm guessing if you make cards already, you will know what size you like to start with. But then the increments will be the same. So my next piece of card I cut, and I've cut it in a different color to make it easy to see the layers, is a quarter, uh, sorry, it's one, uh, no, actually, let me miss that. I'm going to give you alternate ones to start with. So this is a quarter of an inch smaller all round. So instead of five and three quarters of an inch, it's five and a half inches. And instead of four inches, it's three and three quarters of an inch. So that gives me my standard card borders. So that would typically be the size of my first layer. And then my next layer would come down by another quarter of an inch. So instead of five and a half, this one is five and a quarter. And instead of three and three quarter inches wide, this is three and a half inches wide. And on a simple card, this layer would be the one that I do my stamping on. And that would make my standard card front on a, a, a fairly straightforward card. So that's exactly what I did on this card here. So you can see that now. If I wanted to add more layers, then I'm just trying to find my piece of card. The one I want is five inches instead of five and a quarter by three and a quarter inches instead of three and a half. So that would give me a smaller one on there. So if I wanted to add some extra color maybe, then I could do that. And you can keep coming down and coming down and coming down. My next one would be four and three quarters by three inches and so on, as small as you want to get. Now these layers also work if your card is landscape orientation. The only difference will be that your base card will be different. So instead it will be, let me put a line under that, it will be 11 and a half inches by 4 inches and you're going to score it at 
five and three quarter inches and this is a landscape card there we are so if you want your card and I know I'm turning it so you can't read the writing if you want your card this way round with the fold down here then that's the measurement you would make your card base would be 11 and a half inches by four inches you'll score it at five and three quarters of an inch and that will give you a card front that still measures five and three quarters by four inches so these work portrait they work landscape now if you are wanting instead to have narrower borders and I'm just going to put my little bits of card over here back in order there we go you can decrease by one eighth of an inch in which case my red layer here this is five and three quarters that's the same as five and six eighths so I've reduced it by one eighth which gives me five and five eighths and then my width across instead of being four inches I've taken off one eighth of an inch and that gives me three and seven eighths of an inch and so that will give me narrower borders and I can keep coming down so this one I've shown you once before but it's one eighth of an inch smaller so it's five and a half by three and three quarters and then if I reduce that by an eighth of an inch I get five and three eighths by three and five eighths so that again will layer on top with really narrow borders and I can keep going this one you've seen before this is an eighth of an inch smaller at five and a quarter by three and a half inches and then I can go down from that to this one so it's five and an eighth by three and three eighths you saw this one before again I've gone down by an eighth of an inch five inches by three and a quarter inches and then the last one I've cut because I don't usually go smaller than that I've taken off an eighth of an inch once again and gives me four and seven eighths by three and one eighth of an inch okay so I can do lots and lots and lots of layers that way now I really suggest that if you don't hold the measurements in your head and most people don't that you make yourself a series of card layers like this you can use any old scraps of card they don't even have to be different colors but I think you can see the effect much easier if you have different colors and once you've got these you can play around so for instance let's say I want to make let's do a landscape card I'm turning that over just so the writing's not sideways and then I might decide okay well I'm gonna want to see a reasonable amount of the blue so I'm gonna miss out this layer and then let's say that I want a really narrow border next and I can try all these out before I've cut my decent card just to see if I like the way they're looking and then I could miss out two let's pop this one on so I've actually got a much wider border there and then I could put this one on and have a narrow border So I hope you can see what I mean. You can just you can play around with these endlessly to give you different effects, to try them out, to see what you like. And of course that will all work in portrait format as well. So I'm going to give you a moment to just absorb that. <laughs> So the other Maureen is saying, great news, Mary, and her first great-granddaughter was born last year. How lovely. That really is so exciting. I don't have grandchildren yet. I hope I will one day, and I know it's going to be brilliant when I do. So I've given you those measurements for a basic UK card size. However, sometimes we like to make bigger cards, so I've just written these down for you so if you were going to start off with a card where the front measured five inches by seven inches then these are your measurements so you can you're welcome to just write these down to save you having to do the maths so I've put in brackets the smaller increments and the ones out of brackets are perhaps the more standard ones which just go down by a quarter of an inch but the ones in brackets go down by an eighth of an inch 
so I'm going to read these out five inches by seven inches is your card front obviously you'll need a wider piece of card than that to actually make your card base but that's your card front so a narrow border your next piece would be four and seven eighths of an inch by six and seven eighths of an inch your next one could be four and three quarters of an inch by six and three quarters of an inch and of course you might miss out that one altogether and if you're making an insert this is usually the same size that I would use for my insert as well so the next one with a very narrow border would be five four sorry four and five eighths of an inch by six and five eighths of an inch and below that would be four and a half by six and a half inches and once again you could miss that one out in which case you just have those narrow narrower border uh, sorry wider borders rather than the narrower borders the next really narrow one would be four and three eighths by six and three eighths of an inch four and a quarter by six and a quarter inches four and an eighth by six and an eighth of an inch and then four inches by six inches I'm just going to drink some water while I leave that up there in case any of you are writing that down okay and then finally for a bigger card again with a slightly different look to it if you make a card where your card front is six inches by eight inches so again I've done the numbers for you so you don't have to work them out so going down by an eighth of an inch would be five and seven eighths of an inch by seven and seven eighths of an inch then five and three quarters by seven and three quarters and that's also the size I would cut my insert five and five eighths of an inch by seven and five eighths of an inch five and a half inches by seven and a half inches five and three eighths of an inch by seven and three eighths of an inch five and a quarter inches by seven and a quarter inches five and an eighth of an inch by seven and an eighth of an inch and then five inches by seven inches and of course you can keep going and keep going and then I have one more thing to tell you before I actually get on and do some crafting and Marjorie's here she says she's here but she forgot to say so and hello to everyone thank you Marjorie it's lovely to have you you're very welcome okay the other thing that you can use to help you with your layering are the layering dies or the nesting dies they're sometimes called we have lots of sets of these in differing shapes we've got rectangles we've got rectangles with stitching we've got rectangles with crazy stitching with deckled edges uh, we've got mixed shape packs with stitching lots and lots of them so these are the circles layering dies and these just all nest together so again I've cut all of those in different colors here just to show you and if you have the nesting dies again this is something that you can do they nest together actually I think they look really lovely with all these cuts there we go so that is all of them so you could actually use all of them on a box a box lid particularly it's quite tall now because I've got is that 16 dies let me have a look how many dies have we got in this set I'm sure it normally says on here yes it does somewhere so yes 16 16 different circles some are plain and some are scalloped but of course you can do exactly the same playing with this as you can with the rectangular layers that I've just shown you so let's say I pick out the largest scalloped circle then I might miss one and then I could see how this one looks on there and then perhaps I'll miss two and then bring in this plain circle so that gives me a wider scalloped border than the outside one and then if I pick the next two I get a really narrow scalloped border and then what should we do let's let's skip four and let's finish with these two so there we go so if I pick that up because I've got these cut 
I can just lift them up and play around with the sizes. Obviously this isn't necessarily the colours you'd be using, but I can, I can mess around with them and see what I think. And then I can change that. Let's say I don't like the two scallop borders together, so I can try starting with a plain one. And let's say I don't like that, there's too much space there. Well, perhaps I'll bring in an extra circle and then put those two back on top. There we are. So again, that gives me a different look. So I encourage you, if you have the nesting dies, to cut them all out, in one in each in a different colour, and you can then play around to your heart's content with them and see what your layers are going to look like. All right, so that is a lot of theory. I'm now going to put some of it into practice. I've got a couple of cards to make for you. written my measurements down so I'm using my standard card size that I talked about before everything's blowing so this is going to be a portrait orientation card so this is eight inches by five and three quarter inches scored at four and I've cut it in Tahitian tied then my next layer down I've just reduced the numbers there we go And let me pull back my layers here. Where have they gone? Just to show you. There we go. Ooh, goodness me, I'm going to have to weight that down. Let's pop something on that, try and stop it blowing away. Okay. Right, so I've got those two layers there. So that's, that's my card base layer. Then I've missed a layer, and I've done that one. So I've actually gone down by three-eighths of an inch. And then the layer I'm going to stamp on, I've gone down by one-eighth of an inch. So it's this one here, uh, if I can find it. Five and a quarter, there we are. So looking at my templates, it's like this. So I, there we go. So I skipped one layer after this one, and then I did the next consecutive one. So we've got a th three eighths difference and a one eighth difference when you're measuring the card all the way. And then that border is obviously halved in terms of how wide it is here. So I'm hoping that makes sense. So this piece, for instance, the green piece, is an eighth of an inch bigger all round than this flamingo piece on top. And an eighth of an inch all round gives you a sixteenth of an inch on each side, like that. But that's probably more than you need to know. <laughs> all right, so those are my, my layers that I've picked. Then I've also got one here for the insert. This is five and a half by three and three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to pull out some stamps. And these are all from the Oceanfront set. I've got a pile of ink pads and I'm going to create an ocean scene and then just simply layer my card together. So this is a very simple card with some layering and some stamping. I'm glad that was helpful, Marjorie. Thank you very much for letting me know. Always good, good to know that the information is helpful. If you want those measurements back, just let me know. Now I'm going to be working on a foam mat, which I'm just going to slide under my grid paper because some of the stamping is going to go off the edge. And I'm using a foam mat because the oceanfront stamps are photopolymer, they're clear stamps, and they need a little bit of padding underneath them. Now if you've ever had the waterfront set, which was one of my all-time favourite sets, 
and it was around quite a long time before it retired. This one works in exactly the same way. You've got these rather random looking shapes here and you can build them up to make all kinds of scenes and it's really a set that you need to start playing with um, to make real sense of and then once you start you don't want to actually stop. So I'm using this shape here for my sky and if you imagine somebody with some watercolour paint on a brush then they've just swooshed their brush across the card and that's the effect I'm going to get by using a stamp. And this has a straighter edge and a more wobbly edge and I'm going to use the straighter edge at the top and it's going to leave me with some white card showing at the sides which I really like. Like that. And if I hold it up you can hopefully see that that stamp picks up more ink along that more wobbly edge than it does on the straight edge so you get a graduation or an ombre effect. Now obviously you can use that stamp that way up as well if you want paler at the bottom. I'm using it this way with the darker at the bottom. The dog is barking. It's possible my doorbell may ring because UPS are due here this afternoon. So if they ring the doorbell, I'm going to have to apologise and run and collect my package. It might not be. She might be barking at a bird. <laughs> you can never tell. And I don't think I said that was balmy blue ink. So I've just inked this stamp up with Tahitian Tide. So that is this image here. And this has got a kind of a diagonal line on it, which I'm going to put at the bottom and I'm going to overlap the top just very slightly. So my thought now is I'm stamping the sea underneath the sky. There we go. And this image has some little gaps in it, just here, which look a little bit like reflection on the water or waves. So that's all done for you. So next I'm going to come in with crumb cake ink and I'm going to create the beach and the stamp I'm using for that is this one here. Now this is roughly a triangle with the diagonal coming down here and this diagonal fits really nicely along that diagonal if you want to join those two images together. So let me ink that up, turn it round so it's got it's not straight but a straighter edge and a more wobbly edge and I'm putting the straighter edge against that diagonal from the C and then it will I will end up with approximately a straight line at the bottom. Let me lift that up and show you and I've slightly overlapped it so I've got the look of the waves coming over the sand here. And now I'm going to use that same image and stamp a couple more times. But I think I'm going to stamp off once. Let me just see how, yeah. So I'm going to ink it up again, stamp it off once. And I'm going to use this that way around. And then I'm going to repeat the process but turn the stamp round. So this time I've got the wobbly edge at the top just to kind of keep this in a rectangle. There we are. So that's kind of given me the look, the look of sand and I'm going to stamp off twice now and turn my stamp. I'm really just using this to fill the space and I'm getting lighter as I come towards the bottom of my card or the foreground if you like and I'll pick this up and show you in a sec. There we are. I've just put a thumbprint there, look. I wonder if I can cover that up with one of my next stamps. Okay, and let me move that forward so hopefully you can see right down to the bottom here where it's got very pale. So I've got my sky, my sea and my beach. Next I'm going to stamp some vegetation. So there are several options for that in here. We've got these tall grasses, we've got these short ones, and then we've got these here with a seed head on them. So I'm going to use all of those. I have soft suede ink here. I'm going to use this for the tall grasses. I'm going to put them towards the back and I'm going to see if I can cover up that smudge. Let's see if that works. Oh yes, <laughs> that will do stamp that one a couple of times 
and then do the same with this and I'm stamping off the edge so it looks a little bit less like the same stamp repeated. So there's my smudge. You can still see some of it but it's definitely disguised and I think I can get away with that. I'm going to now bring in a darker brown. This is early espresso and I'm going to use that image with the seed heads on it and I'm going to stamp it more to the foreground and then I'm going to stamp it off once and then stamp it a little bit further back just to help with a little bit of sense of perspective and I might actually come back and do that with that one in a minute and then I'm going to stamp this a little bit lower down uh, let's do that twice and then stamp it off and stamp it higher which is into the background. Let's show you that. And I do want to do that actually with that other grasses stamp I think. Stamp it off and then stamp on my project. So let's bring that one back. Stamp off and then one there and then I'll do one the other side as well it just that's better it just adds add some depth just waiting there's a long lag as usual for my iPad to catch up so I can see whether you can actually see what I'm trying to show you and yes I think you can okay and then finally I'm just going to add a touch of green in the foreground so this is granny apple green and I'm going to use that small grass image and I'm going to stamp it a few times in the foreground and I'm moving it to different heights to try to make it look a little bit more realistic and then I'm going to stamp it off and stamp a bit further into my scene And I hope you can see why I like this set so much. You can't really do it wrong and I think it's particularly effective when you do some stamping off like this. You just build it up slowly and you know if you end up at the end and you think I wish I hadn't put that there then see it as a practice piece and just repeat all the bits you liked on another piece of card but really you're not likely to go wrong. I think that's a little bit close. Let me bring that down a bit. There we are. And I meant to pick up my stamp with the gulls. Actually, I'm just gonna do that. It's only on the shelf next to me, but to reach, I've got to take the microphone off. So bear with me a second while I find that stamp set. Okay, I'm back. That's the one I wanted. And I haven't got a block in reach, so let's just peel off that stamp. And we'll use this little block. And I don't need, there we go, I don't need the foam mat because I've got foam on this. And I've got a Memento black ink pad here. We just need a couple of gulls. There we are, that's better. So that then is my card front. All it consists of is stamping. However, I did pull out my faux sea glass shapes because I wondered whether they might be fun on there. And I'm just going to, they're on this kind of plastic see through thing. And I'm just going to kind of lay that on there and see what I think. I think I will like some of those on there just for a little bit of texture. If we still had pebbles, I don't know if you remember those from the last mini catalogue, I would probably be using those. 
So I'm just picking out some of the different shapes here. I think I probably just want the green ones. Mm, or maybe not, maybe not. Pop a couple of the white ones in as well. I need one more, I think, over here somewhere. There's another wasp in here. The trouble with having the fan on is that the wasps get blown into you. <laughs> it's not good. Yeah, that's another wasp. So I'm hoping you can see those little shapes just down the bottom there. All right, so I'm now just going to layer everything together. So let's bring these back. I expect my glue is super runny. I don't know what the temperature is in my craft room. It's absolutely baking in here. Yeah, very runny glue. <laughs> <laughs> and that liquid glue allows me to slide these two pieces of card before the glue actually grabs so even though I've got a very narrow border I can get everything on there centrally and then I'm going to just glue this to my card base gosh that glue is so liquid I'm going to leave this as a blank card because I think it would be great for pretty much anything. A thank you, um, a best wishes, a birthday, all of those things will work with it. But I am going to stamp the insert um, and what should we put on that? Let's put a little bit of beach on there. So I'm going to need my foam mat back. I'm just going to, yeah, it's, it's just kind of get some beach happening along the bottom there. And I'll pop some grasses on there too, and I think that will do nicely. So this one with the tall grass is soft suede. I stamped in crumb cake there. bring in early espresso with the image with the seed head on it and then just a little bit of that granny apple green Um, oh yeah, I swapped, swapped the stamp on the block, didn't I? So let's just pop that one back. And we'll do a bit of stamping off as well. There we are. So that is my insert I'm absolutely covered in ink <laughs> I'm hoping I'm not going to transfer it so I'll pop that one inside the card and then it's done so when I was deciding on which of the layers I was going to use for this card I thought about my stamping first which is fairly light and airy there's lots of blues and stamped off bits but I knew that that would be set off really nicely by a dark border but what I didn't want was for it to be a really heavy border so that was why I picked the narrow border so my soft suede piece is just an eighth of an inch different to the white one I stamped on 
and then to add to the airiness I wanted a bit more of my card base to show that beautiful bright blue so I made that border before you see the soft suede wider than usual now I could have done it in lots of different ways and I'm sure it would still have been a nice card but that was why I particularly chose those border intervals for that card and I'm going to clean those stamps before I move them so let me leave you the card let me pull out the measurements again and put those there and weigh it down so it doesn't blow away I need to weigh it down somewhere else aren't I let's try there that's better I'm just going to clean my stamps to the side you've got something pretty to look at and then I've got one more card to make with you how are we doing for time Ooh, creeping up to three o'clock never mind if I don't clean these stamps they will either get ink all over something on my desk that I then pick up and then I'll get inky and put it on my project or I will lean across the stamps and get covered in ink so I try and clean as I go experience tells me it's the safest thing to do I'm going to pop that little seagull back in the box because he is so tiny and then everything else I'm just going to dump in my bucket and I will sort those out when we've finished So that's that one. Let me put that over there. I can show you again at the end. And then I'm going to bring in the next one. Now, this card was inspired by one I was sent. So, Andrew, if you're watching, this is one of the many beautiful cards you sent me. I received a box of the most beautiful, beautiful, beautiful detailed cards from one of my team, Andrew and I was so so touched and delighted to get them and they're going to be a huge source of inspiration to me as well as looking beautiful in my craft room and this was a card that Andrew sent me and he'd got a really interesting sized card base and then he'd got really interesting layers and I kind of think of this as going off piece so if you've had a look at the measurements that I was using earlier these break all the rules <laughs> but they also illustrate that when you understand what you're looking to do with layers, you're looking to set different colours against each other, you're using more or smaller amounts of different colours depending on the effect you want to get. I talked in this one about wanting a dark layer to set off the stamping but not having it be very heavy, for instance then you can play around with your dimensions and you don't actually have to follow the rules like so many things once you understand how to do something you can then push the boundaries a bit so in this one Andrew has used all kinds of different uh, intervals between his layers he's also used the new trio punch which I'm gonna have to buy because several of his cards use it and I don't have it but I now need it um, so I can't replicate those but I'm basically going to re remake a version of this card and then I'll bring his back to show you again so I'm obviously on a beachy theme at the moment I'm guessing because of the, of the way the weather has been so I've got some shells here and I'll talk you through the bits in a moment let me put this piece of paper down here with the measurements I used and then I'm going to bring in some soft pastels and show you a little trick with those and most of this card is done because I had a feeling I would be short of time and indeed I am all right so the measurements for this card which I've taken from Andrew's card so my card front bottom layer is a five and a half by seven inches so the card to make it was 11 inches by seven inches scored at five and a half 
and then my first layer is five inches by six and a half inches my second layer is a four and five eighths of an inch by six and an eighth or at least these are the layers that Andrew had so mine is that too and then he also had these layers which I haven't used because I'm using a die cut which takes the place of one of those layers so I'm just going to check this one I'm hoping I've given you the right number there six and an eighth by yes I have so I've used the first of three layers on here and then instead of this layer I used the die cut and then I didn't obviously want another layer on top of this so I haven't used that bottom one at all and this layer is approximately the size of that next layer which is was three and a half by five and a half inches and then I haven't used the three inches by four and five eighths of an inch layer so I can bring these back at the end if you need them thank you Kay I'm glad you liked that first card okay so the colors I've used are pool party for my card base granny apple green layer and then coastal cabana and I'm going to finish coloring my die cut image here first let me just pop it for a minute on top of that just so that the mess on my grid paper isn't distracting so to create this die cut piece I've used two items I've used and I can't remember the name of this embossing folder I meant to look that up let me quickly find it so I can tell you seashells this is the seashells 3d embossing folder and it works brilliantly with the seaside seashells dies and what I've done is I've used watercolor paper because I knew I was going to be using the soft pastels I wanted um, a card that wasn't too shiny so the watercolor paper has quite a lot of tooth to it it's a slightly rough surface so I cut this large die um, out of watercolor paper then I put my die cut piece inside the embossing folder and I just laid it on here and then just got it exactly in line with the embossing and you probably can't see the embossing on camera very easily but I laid it in here and just matched up the pattern and then carefully closed the folder and sent it through my die cut and embossing machine and that put the texture into the paper if I'd done it the other way way around if I'd embossed the paper and then cut it I would have flattened out some of the texture when it went through the machine to be cut so you want to cut first and then emboss and sh I should just note that this is not a hybrid embossing folder we do have some hybrid embossing folders where you can put the die inside the embossing folder and then cut and emboss in one pass through your machine but this is not one of those so don't try doing that and then I wanted to add some really soft colour so I thought that the soft pastels would be perfect for that and I've done this in a couple of ways I've added some colour using a cotton bud because I wanted some fine detail on here and then I've also used one of my favourite tools which is my finger <laughs> to, um, to add in some colour so I'm just going to use a bit of daffodil delight here and I've got a scrap of card so I'm actually going to scribble off some of the color onto my card scrap pick it up on my cotton bud you can pick it up directly on the stick but I find it, it takes you a long time to get enough color and then I have no idea if this will show I've got this little scallop shell here I'm going to color and it's got some raised dot patterning on it so I'm going to try and hit that pattern with my cotton bud first of all because I'd like those areas to be a little bit darker and because they're tiny dots and my cotton bud is quite a lot bigger I'm going over the edges of the raised bits but don't worry about that what I'm going to do next I'm just waiting to see if you can see I think you can just about see what I've done there all right so I'm then going to pick up some more color on my fingertip and I'm just going to blend it all over there and that will color the background 
and it will colour some more on top of those raised areas so I end up with the raised areas a slightly darker colour than the rest of the shell surrounding it. Now you can see that was really not a very technical way of applying the pastels at all. A, you know, a young child could do that quite easily. So don't be frightened of these. If you don't have them, they're lovely to use. They're really fun and they give a really soft, interesting effect. And that's how I coloured this whole piece there are two different greens in there which I've used. This is the red but I only used it very lightly so it's actually more of a, a coral colour and there's a blue and there's coastal cabana so I've used lots of the colours to colour my watercolour paper and because of that rough texture on the paper it's held the colour beautifully that's not it's not really wanting to come off. All right, so before I glue that on my layer, I am going to add a little bit of stamping. And I'm going to need my stamping mat back. Let's slide that underneath. And I'm going to use one of the stamps from the Friends Are Like Seashells. So this is the stamp set that coordinates with the dies. And I'm using this little texture stamp here. And I'm not going to stamp all over my card, but I am going to try and add a little bit of interest to the areas that are going to be shown, kind of are going to sit outside of the die cut. And I'll lay the die cut on here in just a minute and check. So I'm using Coastal Cabana ink, which is the same colour as the card. And I've stamped it off each time just so it doesn't get too intense a colour because I want it to add some visual texture rather than some obvious colour. I could use my Versamark ink pad for this if I wanted to. Um, I think that would give me a stronger effect but it would also work and the advantage of a Versamark ink pad is when you stamp it onto coloured card you get like a watermark effect so you get um, an effect that looks as if you've got an ink that's just very slightly darker than your card colour so if you don't have ink in all the same colours as your card Versamark can be a really good way around that there we are so that is very subtle but it's just not a blank piece of card anymore I'm hoping that you can see that again until my iPad shows me what you can see I can't tell you so there's some stamping around really around kind of the middles of all those four edges Okay, so let me layer these pieces up. I'm going to take out my insert. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I think I'm going to have to have some water. Just a moment. That's better. Too much talking on a hot day. <laughs> right, so this is my granny apple green layer. And I'm just going to layer this onto that card base. The card base again is pool party. Then I've got my stamped coastal cabana layer. glue once I glue on my finger let's just get that off with my glue eraser there we are and now I'm going to add my die cut layer so I'm not gluing every single part of this but I am trying to make sure that each little detailed section is going to be held down somewhere And bearing in mind that this has been embossed, there are quite a lot of kind of indented layers which are not going to make contact with the card I'm gluing it to. So where there are raised areas, I'm making sure I add more glue than I would normally so that there is plenty to hold it in place. And then I'm just going to pop that centrally on there. Rub the glue off my fingers. I'm crafting in such a messy way today. There we are. 
and then on Andrew's card he had this really nice three layered sentiment piece here so I've cut some pieces for that as well so I'm going to use a stamp from Go To Greetings, which actually is the same set that Andrew used. Where is it? Here we go. I've got a happy birthday here. And I don't need my mat because I've got a red rubber stamp. If you have too much sponge underneath, it can mean that you get a smudgy image. go I've cut that slip of card for speed but normally I would stamp onto a bigger piece and then cut it down but I thought that we might be getting to the end of the session which indeed we are So I'm going to line these up at one end and then I will trim off the extra. So how large these are going to be is going to depend on what sentiment you're using. But each subsequent layer is a quarter of an inch wider than the one before it. So that then gives you that graduation. And I am pretty sure that I'm going to trim this. Yeah. Trim this level with that vanilla piece. There we go. think there. I'm just going to hold that in place for a couple of minutes, not a couple of minutes, a few seconds actually, just to let it really grab on top of that watercolour paper because the watercolour paper, um, it's not absorbent so uh, the glue doesn't absorb into it quickly so things take just a, a moment longer than they might to grab onto it. So that's my card front with the exception of one little detail. So I said that I don't have, I think it's called the best trio punch, which Andrew has used here on the corners. So given that I was using his card as inspiration, I've cut myself some little tiny triangles instead. And all I did was cut a strip of card. This is half an inch wide. And then I cut half inch pieces. So I had little squares and then I cut those half inch squares in half on the diagonal to give me little triangles. So this will give me a similar pop of colour in the corners, although I don't have the fancy edge on there. But it does add just a little bit of interest. actually put out any bling but I've, I've got a, a feeling that this needs a little bit of bling so let me have a look what have we got so those are a possibility or 
the iridescent pearls. have a look. Thank you Belinda, you're enjoying watching this come together. Lots of comments actually have come up. Mary thinks the information on layer size has been really helpful. She's been fussy cutting flowers this afternoon and she's going to stick them on cards with layers. Lovely Mary, do share a photo with me, I'd love to see that. Maureen, you are very welcome, I'm glad you like the card and you found it helpful. And Belinda saying that Fabulous Frames on page 171 of the annual catalogue has fab photo corners too. You're right actually Belinda, it does, doesn't it? I was looking at that only the other day. So thank you for that. Yeah, I think I'm going to use these. So these are the Opal Rounds. I used packets and packets of these when they first came out and they've kind of been languishing a little bit in with my embellishments. But I think probably the time has come to to scatter a couple of three of them on here just to they, they pick up the light and because they're iridescent they've got kind of the turquoise in them it's too far up there I think there we are so that's added a few opal rounds on there which has just just given it a little bit of something so that is my finished card Let me lower it down a bit actually, it's a bit big for, to show you, there we are. And let me put Andrew's next to it, so you can see the original inspiration. Now, <laughs> those two cards, now I've got them next to each other, are incredibly different, aren't they? Very different to each other. However, this one came from that one. So if you have cards in your stash, either that you've made, maybe you've been sent them, or even made them at a class, um, don't ignore the fact that you can use them as inspiration. So I measured Andrew's layers and I thought about what he'd done that I really liked and then I transferred those elements to my card. And I'm just quickly going to do the insert here. All I'm going to do is stamp a little shell and the happy birthday. Then my card is finished and we are at the end of today's session. So this layer is a quarter of an inch smaller all round than my card front. So I can give you the measurement for it in just a second. So my card front is five and a half by seven and my insert, let's put it down here, is five and a quarter by six and three quarters of an inch. There we are. So I went down a quarter of an inch from that size to get my insert. And then I'm just going to gather some things together as a kind of a summary, whoops, summary. And then I'll say goodbye to you. All right, so I started off suggesting that you cut yourself a pile of layers going down in an eighth of an inch increments so that you can play with them and get an idea as to what your card might look like and I also showed you that you can do the same with any of your layering or nesting dies and then I talked you through how I how and why I'd chosen the layers that I did for this card um, and I also showed you some of this this kind of collage stamping with the oceanfront set and we talked about light and dark colors how darker colors can look heavy 
about deciding that you want more of uh, a brighter color to show and so on. And then for this one, I used another card for inspiration, in this case, my team member Andrews, where he had kind of broken the rules that I'd just given you on card layering and showed you that that works too. So once you get confident, you can then kind of push the boundaries a little bit. And we also talked a little bit about um, copying a card that you've already got and making something completely new from it. So I hope you enjoyed that. I've had a ball this afternoon. Even though it's so hot, I've really enjoyed the crafting. And I'm just going to cover you over, come back up, and say my goodbyes. There we are. OK, so thank you very much for joining me on this very hot afternoon. I'm grateful to you for spending time with me. You can obviously watch this on the replay. And indeed, if you are watching this on the replay or on YouTube, thank you so much for joining me there as well. I'll be back here at two o'clock next Friday and I'm going to be inspired by the sea and the beach. So uh, I will leave you with that as a theme for next week. I imagine it's still going to be very hot. So I'm hoping that we can all um, mentally cool off a little bit by thinking about being at the beach. I hope you have a great weekend and have some nice things planned. And I will really look forward to seeing you again next week. So thank you so much and bye bye.